And good evening. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, the breaking news. The U.S. preparing to send additional forces to the Middle East. This as we have new images just declassified tonight of what Team Trump says is an Iranian attack. The images of the attack on two tankers last week are detailed, they are close up, and they have only been declassified after U.S. allies refused to accept Trump's blame of Iran. So let me show you some of what we now have. This one, a clear image taken by a U.S. helicopter showing an Iranian Revolutionary Guard boat. Moments after that crew removed, we'll show you this, what the Pentagon said last week was this unexploded mine, that's what you see there in the in the uh, the circle from one of the tankers. Now there's another image uh, which shows uh, what the Pentagon says is another leftover mine, and then the image of a hole. Look at that. That's a hole in one of the tanker holes from the blast. So they've put all this out, all in 11 new images. Coming after a video was not enough to convince key allies, including Germany and Japan, that Iran was responsible for the attack. And by the way, one of the ships was even Japanese. The German foreign minister said the video was, quote, not enough. And this frustrated Trump's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who said, just believe me, it's what U.S. intelligence says. I wouldn't have said it if the intelligence community hadn't become convinced that this was the case. He says the U.S. intelligence community became convinced Iran attacked those ships, so just believe him. The problem is, the reason allies do not trust Pompeo and just believe him because he says so is because he himself has undercut and questioned the U.S. intelligence community. Take the death of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi, which, to use his word, the CIA concluded was ordered by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. When asked about the CIA's conclusion, here is what Pompeo said. There's no direct evidence linking him to the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Pompeo's cherry-picking of when to believe U.S. intelligence mirrors that of his boss, who obviously directly sided with Saudi Arabia instead of the CIA in the Khashoggi killing. I hate the crime. I hate what's done. I hate the cover-up. Uh, and I will tell you this, the crown prince hates it more than I do, and they have vehemently denied it. Trump and Pompeo's skepticism of the CIA then coming thanks to the Saudi crown prince being a friend of Trump's White House. But now, when it comes to Iran, Team Trump wants the world to blindly believe the CIA. Well, Iran did do it, and you know they did it because you saw the boat. No second guessing his intelligence leadership this time. Caitlin Collins is out front live outside the White House. Fred Pleiken is live for us in Tehran tonight. And I want to begin with you, Caitlin, in Washington. What more are you learning about the administration's uh, latest moves against Iran tonight? Well, the acting defense secretary, Patrick Shanahan, has announced that the Pentagon has authorized 1,000 additional troops to the Middle East for what he says is, quote, defensive purposes to address air, naval, and ground-based threats in the Middle East. Now, Aaron, we had a feeling this was coming because the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the administration was weighing all of the options here, including military ones. But we should note that in his statement, Shanahan says, quote, the United States does not seek conflict with Iran. He says the action being taken today with these 1,000 additional troops is just to ensure the safety and welfare of our military personnel working in the area. But of course, this comes as we are seeing Pompeo say not only they are considering a range of op options, but also as the U.S is trying to work to get allies to be on their side and convince that it was Iran who was behind these attacks. As you've heard and you just showed there, Pompeo saying pretty unequivocally and the president saying it as well. Now the question going forward is if they're successful and if they're able to do that because so far the president has been convinced that his maximum pressure campaign here was going to work and now you're seeing Iran really resist that pressure from the Trump administration. Now Shanahan says he made this decision, Aaron, about the 1,000 additional troops in conjunction with the White House, U.S. Central Command, which made the request, he said, and of course the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And we should note that Pompeo is expected to travel to Florida tomorrow to go to mm. U.S. Central Command, which oversees all of these military deployments in the Middle East. All right. Thank you very much, Caitlin. And let's go straight to Tehran. Now, Fred, how is Iran responding tonight? 
Well, hi, Aaron. And the, uh, the Iranians are continuing to say, despite what the Trump administration uh, is putting out there, that they unequivocally were not behind the attacks on those tankers. At the same time, a troubling development with a senior Iranian official telling CNN that he believes Iran and the United States are on a confrontation course, and he believes that, that could have devastating consequences for the entire Middle Eastern region. Now, the Iranians, for their part, are saying they're absolutely not going to back down. They don't necessarily believe that President Trump wants an escalation that could lead to a shooting war between the Iranians and the United States. But at the same time, they do believe that there might be people in the administration that do kind of want to push the administration into that direction. So certainly an extremely dangerous situation that's going on here in this region. At the same time, also some pretty bellicose rhetoric going on from the Iranians themselves. The chief of the general staff of Iran saying today that if the Iranians wanted to shut down the Strait of Hormuz, they could easily do that because he believes Iran's military is strong enough to do that. But he also said the Iranians would do that in plain sight. In other words, not through the kind of tanker attacks that we've seen in the Gulf in the past couple of days. Of course, hmm. that indeed would be devastating for the world's oil supply, uh, Aaron. About 20 percent of the world's oil supply goes through the Strait of Hormuz. I can tell you I've gone through the Strait of Hormuz myself. It really is a very, very narrow area, so it could be very dangerous if there is a confrontation there, Aaron.